Hello and welcome back to Kinboshi Radio where we have a Bonds K and some surprise sneak attack news from last night as well, Nick. Uh, I mean, do we want to start with the real quick surprise news or jump into the Bonds K? Oh, absolutely start with the surprise. Oh, well, give it to us. What's what's the word? Uh, Eiji Nojo is officially retired from right. the sport, which, yeah, I mean, like we've talked about, it makes sense. He's had severe back injuries. He's had some alcohol issues, but it's still a shock. I know, it just especially because... He went through and won the Jurio title, so like he fought that whole Basho. I, I guess th- what it sounds feels like to me is almost like winning Jurio was his sort of redemption story after that suspension and the news that came out about, like you said, his alcohol issues and some of his violence issues off the dojo. And so maybe this is him just leaving on a high note. I mean, yeah, it's a he did definitely gonna go out on a high note when he beat Asunayama, the one where everybody's like, no, this is his his tournament for sure. Goes out, and honestly, I think the thing I'm most excited about for him is that I think this is a good chance now for him to address all those issues, and I mean, if he's been kind of self-medicating with alcohol for help his back, losing the weight, like, I think all this could be pretty good for him. I think those are all great points, and yeah, like you said, uh, uh, at some point, the human matters way more than the sport, um, so that's that that moment is now um and so if he's gonna get help then great i do think that it feels a little bit like the sport uh i don't know i mean do you think he was gonna contend in this basho if his back injuries really were that serious like you know what i mean like he it's not that long ago that he won the U show and he obviously just won in very impressive fashion against a very impressive up-and-coming crop of jurio fighters won another title at a lower division um I don't know. I mean, I guess, like we said, the human issues matter more, but on the sport side, do you feel like we're losing something here in the upcoming Basho? I don't think so. I think the, you know, the main similarity between those two is that he had a full tournament ahead of those that Mm. he completely won. Yeah, yeah, for the back. Yep, so even with a couple of months, if he's been training and just coming off of, you know, a lot of pretty brutal matches, like, I I think he would have done well. I mean, he usually does fairly well, but not, uh, he wouldn't have won. Yeah. I, I, fair enough, I, especially because, I mean, let's hop into it, but, um, we have a very, we have a Bonske now, and it looks pretty impressive, we've already talked last time about how we have these, uh, very impressive Sekiwake candidates in Kiribayama and Daisho who might become Ozeki, uh, Takakesho is still there as an Ozeki, and Teru no Fuji should be coming back, which we'll talk about a little later, but promotions in the Bonske, the sort of guys who are on a rising tide, what stuck out to you, and what are you really looking for in this upcoming Bonske, if not a guy like Ichinojo, who now we know is not competing? Uh, who are the guys who you thought would have kept him from the title anyway, or had an impressive run here? So honestly, looking at the Sekawake for this Bonske, I, I'm really excited. Like yeah. these are all very solid. Like you know, we'll see with Shodai. <laughs> He's kind of <laughs> hit and miss, but he did so well last time. Maybe he'll do well, maybe not. But the rest of them, yeah, super excited. All solid performers that have been had a really good year. Yeah, the Sanyaku's looking really good, and Wakamoto Haru uh, and Wakataka Kage did do the flip flop, uh, like we thought it would happen. But Wakamoto Haru, we talked about last time. He's looked incredibly good. We know about Kiribayama and Dae Show because they're making those runs, and even Hoshoryu, who in the beginning of last Basho did look to me like he had done some major damage to himself by competing on that injured knee to save Sekiwake in the previous tournament he closed that out in flying fashion and so I mean I think he looks really good as well up there I was so shocked like you said with the last half of that tournament he just he performed so well and I thought after his first three or four I was like ah let's I don't think it's gonna go well he might get demoted and he just he did perform beautifully yeah, like uh, on opening up day six, he was two and three, and uh, I believe then even to get to three and three was that when Onosho had to pull out because of an injury, even like yes. So it yep. it was not great, and then the back half of the tournament he did lose to Kiribayama and he did lose to Takayasu, but neither of us I think would call those shameful losses, especially when you consider that he beat Daisho in that run. He beat Wakamoto Haru in that run. He beat the high flying Midori Fuji in that run. Very impressive. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm really happy that he's at where he's at. 
And I think he performs super solidly at the Sekiwaki level. Yeah, agreed. He's a great talent to have up there. And you and I are both waiting to see if he takes that next step up. Uh, we, I think, are not on the same page as a lot of the sumo community in that we don't think he's taken that step yet. But we're waiting for it. We both like the guy. Yeah, I mean, he's young. He's got a lot of time. He's got a lot of skill and... Yeah. I think he'll get there for sure. Yeah, and you already talked about Shodai coming up to Komosubi, which is exciting. Kotonowaka holding court at Komosubi and kind of leading that pack. Uh, but also, we did have some promotions into the high Maigashiras there. Takayasu rose back up probably to where he's supposed to be, like an M2, M1 kind of guy. Maybe he gets back to Komosubi, that kind of thing. But he should be a challenger there. Your boy, Abi, all the way up to the top of the M1s. And Midori Fuji, after a very impressive but ultimately very disappointing run, is back to M1 which was rough for him last time. Any thoughts about sort of these, the tier of outsider challengers in the Maigashiras, kind of that M1 to M5 range? Yeah, like you said with Midori Fuji, like he definitely deserves to be up there, but I do get a little worried once he gets up in that like top two or three, he yes. kind of can go either way for him. Seven and eight last time he was M1. Yeah, and I think we'll see. I mean, I mean, he... he Performed super well last time, got 10 wins, but he collapsed at the last half where he was really fighting a lot of these top people. So we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, agreed. But a couple guys uh, I know you and I have been talking about sort of off the air. There are some young guys who got some jetpacks in the promotions here. And, you know, we joke about it. Like, if you want, go back and watch the last video. I believe I flashed my Bonds K up there. Go ahead and uh, tear it up because it deserves it. But it, it's interesting. The very top and the very bottom of a Bonds K are really easy to figure out usually. But then the middle, there's a lot of like, uh, we have a gap from M4 all the way to M8. We need to put some guys in there. And this time, that meant some jetpacks for Kimbo Zan, the Kazakh Sensation after his first tournament into this top division is all the way up to M5. And, of course, Choo Choo, my friend, our boy Nishiki Fuji, all the way back up to M3. Give me some thoughts on these boys. So, I am all over the place with them. I'm super excited for Nishiki Fuji to be M3. It'll be, I'm, I think it could be really interesting, because he did really well at 5, got to 4 and kind of tanked it, and now he's back. So, at least he's been like in this range before. I'm worried about Kimbo's on, because... He's had one tournament at this level, and to bump him all the way up to five, I think, is maybe kind of a sink or swim for him. They're putting a lot of pressure on him for... No, I I, I don't know of any people that have gotten that high. Even Nishka Fuji had... What was he? He started at, like... He started the lower, then he hit about 10, 11, and then they brought him up here. Yeah, we were talking about how quick of a ride up he was having, but this one to debut at M14, like, it's not the highest ranking, but you know what I mean? It's not like he was breaking it at M16, 17... And so he goes from 14 and then all of a sudden has a nine rank promotion. He did go 11 and four and win a Kanto show. He had some very impressive wins. He beat Abi, which is impressive because he's generally a big strength based fighter. And so to beat someone whose technique is generally agile and lateral and very um, sort of like quick in and out attacking, that's impressive. He beat Papa Yasu. So he went strength to strength with a guy and out muscled one of the strongest upper bodies in the division. But you know, a lot of his other wins are Oho, who is kind of frustrating, to say the least. Bouchozon, who bounced right out of the division. He beat Tsurugisho, who's been kind of treading water down low. And he even got to get a padded win against Chiyomaru coming up from Juryo. And then he lost to Nishiki Fuji. He lost to Koto Eko, you know, a small guy. He lost to Hokuseho, the other young guy coming up who did not have as much of a jetpack ride. He lost to Daishoho, who's a guy who I've talked about before. Like, physically, the physical stats, he should be a dominant wrestler, but he never is. And so, I, you know, it's only four losses, but those losses were question marks. Yeah, and I, it's so hard to know with where he's at right now how this tournament could go because the people around him are also all over the place. His Mitaki Umi, Kota Shoho, Ura, Nish Nishkigi. Tobizaru. Like, yeah, Tobizaru. I'm like, it could be, it's like a coin flip every day with whether or not they are just going to steamroll everybody or just absolutely collapse. Yeah, I'm with you. And then uh, we'll, we'll circle back to Nishiki Fuji in just a second, but even those guys in that tier right below him. So there's kind of that top tier of the M1 to 5 boys and then that next tier of M6 to 11-ish where he's fighting guys like Mitake Yumi, who we I think he's cooked, man. Like, I have been so frustrated with his performances recently, but 
a, a year ago, he was the dominant wrestler in the division, even like going toe to toe with Terra no Fuji, so to speak. Um, so Kimbo's on, that's an M6, M5 matchup. Kimbo's on will fight me, Takeyumi. And that's a guy who's under him. who are like, Oh, and then Tamawashi, a guy who won a U show just a few Basho ago and is an absolute bulldozer, pusher, thruster force. Hokuto Fuji does the same thing. Meisei is right there. Who is like continually perplexing because I think we both think he is a Sanyaku caliber fighter, but then just lays these absolute eggs. Onosho at M9, who is a contender recently. So yeah, uh, you know, the JSA has to do stuff like this sometimes, and like we've talked about in the past, they might be trying to accelerate the next generation of talent here, and it might be that Kimbo's on there like, okay, 11 wins in a Kanto show, here's the jetpack, what can you do with it? And we'll find out. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I like seeing those two young guys just really just shoved up there, because it's going to shake up a lot of stuff for these top guys who have been kind of floating around the top, you know, one through five, one through seven Mega Shira for a couple years. I know. Shake, it could shake things up a lot for them. I'm with you because I don't know, like, I I think the answer is just that in, in all things I do, I'm an obnoxious hipster where, like, once I learn sort of, like, the, the orthodox line, I'm like, well, but this is more interesting. So long story short, the last few tournaments, I have been just hyper interested and locked into the Juryo and Makushita tournaments. And so I've kind of had this idea where I'm like, is... Is Makauchi just treading water? Is this just that these guys are maintaining their ranks because of the system and how it works that these middle of the road guys keep grinding out enough wins against each other to roadblock these hyper talented young guys? And, you know, there's pieces of evidence in the in favor of that theory when we look at the performance of Nishiki Fuji when he first came up that idea and, and even Wakamoto Haru for that matter that oh yeah these guys are just roadblocked once they get here they eat through these guys who've just been sort of doing just enough to stick in the division but then there is the case of Atami Fuji who is a, or was and is a major talent down in Juryo who got absolutely slapped when he came up and now really hasn't been able to shake that off and recover in Juryo so I don't know yeah no i think that's super interesting um i think more so with the last crowd that came up from jurio mm -hmm. i mean prior to that you get you know maybe three and one would stick and the other two get bounced back down mm -hmm. but a lot of the last group is up here very true you look at the names we've lost over the last year and a half or so chiyomaru gone and hasn't ever been able to come back up tochinoshin doesn't look like he's going to be able to come back up we lost kaisei and then he went ahead and retired yeah um the guys, big names who you would have expected to go down and bounce right back up. And like you said, are once they get down, they're getting drowned out by the hyper talent down in Jurio. Yeah. So I do think we're at a point where those people who are truly that good, the Hakuseho, Daishoho, Kimbozan, I think they are starting to edge out the guys who are just, you know, maybe been just grinding or just kind of complacent, not complacent, but in the same spot for too long. Mm -hmm. Yep. I agree. Uh, and so very excited to see that. Do you think we get another double digit? So like Nishiki Fuji, just to touch again on that, went 10 and five, but got a seven rank promotion instead of the mathematical five rank promotion he should have gotten. Again, whatever, take it all with a grain of salt. But the thing about him is he opened the tournament five and zero. Oh, and he ended the tournament 4-0. and So over those nine weeks, that was nine of his wins. He had a stretch in the middle where he went 1-5 and with losses mm -hmm. to the likes of Aoyama, Uda, Kagayaki, who typically is a Yoho man, Daishoho, who we've talked about, Chiyoshoma. Thoughts? Do you he, think that he... I mean, we both still like the guy, and he gets it done. Like, at the end of the day, that's impressive, the 10-5. and five. But then I just, like, see these question marks in the middle. Yeah. No, I think maybe... if not too few months ago i would have been like nah he's gonna be like up he's gonna be a second walk in like a couple of months but i do yeah where he because his first two tournaments were 10 and 5 then i think it was a 9 and 6 and then he just tanked and then he got that 10 and 5 again but can he i don't know i i don't know if he'll hit a double digit again yeah and i think and, and i think that's okay if he doesn't if you're m3 and you go 9 and 6 that's good that's not uh, someone who's building an Ozeki campaign, but that's good for his age. Although he's going to have to start stepping it up here pretty soon. You know, he generally in sports, sumo is a little different because of how they wear that weight on their bodies. It'll wear their joints down earlier. But typically what they say is that uh, an average male is at their athletic peak at age 27 or 28. Um, that's where he's at. 
So this is the time. These next two years are where he is supposed to make his uh, best run as an athlete. Again, like I said, Sumo's a little different, so honestly, maybe he already went past that peak. Not... I personally don't really think that, especially because he doesn't wear as much weight on his body. So it might be that his peak might not come until 29 or 30. But these are just things I think about. Yeah, uh, I think I'm I mean, the odds are great in his favor, honestly, with all the scores and the people that he's beaten. And I do think he'll do really well at this level. I don't want to see him get bumped up to Sanyaku super quick and then just get thrown back down. Mm-hmm. Like there's been too much of that maybe in the last year, but I think... I would love to see him and Kimbozan up in the top two, three, like stick there for the next tournament as well. Yeah, you want, uh, we, we talked about it in the past, that you want the Kotonowaka slow bake form, formula? Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'd like to see, at least for a few, because it's, I mean, it's clearly paid off for Kotonowaka. He's had maybe a slip up in the last year with scores, but for the most part, he's stayed really solid. It, it feels like the more appropriate way to do it. And like we said, sometimes the records shake out that someone needs to just rise up the bonds k to fill a hole but yeah it seems like that is the way to ensure success for a wrestler if if the jsa is trying to do that and not because they're supposed to be impartial and just fill out the numbers the way that they fall you know what i mean but yeah if they're trying to cook the books so to speak again to the betterment of all uh that would maybe be the recipe what about what about in this next tier so these sort of middle of the pack guys often um in fact i'll even stretch it so m6 to m13 that range. And I'm going to just read these off real quick, but I'll flash this image on screen as well for everyone. But we've got Meisei Mitakeyumi, Hokuto Fuji Tamawashi, Sadanoumi Takanosho, Onosho Hiradoumi, Ryuden Takarafuji, Hokuseiho Daishoho, Aoyama Kotoeko, and then Chiyoshoma Ichinojo, which again, we're losing Ichinojo, but that was one that I was going to bring up here. It seems like every tournament and last time it was, eh, he's a little off of this, but um, having Midori Fuji, this is the range where you can have someone who is very underranked and therefore reels off a bunch of wins against wrestlers who are not as talented as him and make a run at the tournament. Is there someone you see in this admittedly wide stretch who you think is going to do that, who's going to feast on the small, bo- small boy wins um, and then get just enough wins against that M1 to M5 and a couple Sanyaku wins to challenge? Uh, I don't, honestly, with Ichi Nojo having stepped out. Um... I'd like to see Hokuseiho and Daishoho do well. I don't think they... They're not going to stand out at that level. Then again, you never know with Tamawashi. <laughs> I know! Tamawashi is the one I was looking at! Tamawashi and Onosho, but Onosho I trust much less because of that recent injury. And back in the past, it would have been Takanosho, but Smiley Boy has broken my heart so many times that I can't pick him again. <laughs> like you said, without, with the injury, otherwise I would have... Same thing with Onosho. I would have been like, yep, absolutely. Like, he could easily contend. Tamawashi can come out of nowhere. Yeah. He's got so much experience and so much skill that at M7, I think he could... He could. And he's so impressive to me, like, as as a 33-year-old man, he's my hero. 37, he's so strong. He's so much stronger than a lot of these guys who are younger than him and bigger than him. Like, it's insane. I love him. Yeah, and he feels like a much more, I mean, because he's got the experience, much more technical, much more tactical when he's fighting. It's it's great. He's so fun to watch. I know. He's awesome to watch. So I'm also thinking that if anyone's going to do that, it's him. But he is going to have to fight the M1 to M5s a lot simply based on past performances and the fact that he's higher in that tier. What about the bottom? So down at the bottom of the Bonds K, uh, I know the big story we're going to talk about here all the way up to M14. Asano Yama is back. Give me your thoughts on, we've talked about this before, like, I don't know, like, this is the start of the Ozeki return run if we see it, but skepticism abounds. It's so tough because, yeah, I mean, coming back, all of his scores have been super impressive. He's only lost in the last five. He's only lost three. Yeah. Four? Oh, sorry. He's lost a handful, but he's never lost more than two in a in a Basho. However, they've all been really low rank fights, and he's top, top, top level skill. He hasn't fought at too many people at this really high level, and he when he did, Ichi Nojo, he lost. Yep, and even even the the Gonoyama loss, like we've talked about, like that's a good talented up and coming wrestler, but he wasn't supposed to lose that like uh, in the previous tournament. So yeah, so I think he could easily. I mean, he could easily come up and be in the top few. I mean, if he's fighting all these like low rank guys, and some of them are a little questionable at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's just been out of practice. I, I agree. Oh, and let me correct one thing. It was not, it was Ichinojo who lost to Gonoyama, not Asayama. So uh, my, my mistake there, but I'm with you. Like 
other than Miyogiru, who might be able to beat him out of crafty veteran savvy, I mean, I, I believe there are maybe six free padded wins down here for him. Like, I do not think Chiyoshoma can beat him. Ichi Yamamoto, Tsurugisho, Oho, Mitoriu, Kagayaki. I do not think a single one of those six can beat him. So that's a massively padded record if that's the case right like once yeah. you get above that i can see a lot of these guys if they have their day beating him but watching him in judio the impressive thing like you said so the the technical ability is off the charts with asanoyama and people are going to see that when he comes back up uh his strong right arm and how everyone knows that's the baseline of what he's doing but what he can do once he gets that grip with the strong right arm it's it's so versatile and so diverse that it's really going to give a lot of guys struggles except again like that's why i put miyogiru in there as a question mark because mm, that's a savvy veteran who might be able to see what's coming but the other thing about asanoyama that i want people to look out for is how insanely quick his tachi eye is the quick t- twitch reflexes that come out of this man's like calves and thighs like it's lightning quick he is in a dude's chest and that's where I think he overpowered a lot of these younger wrestlers. And frankly, it's why I'm confused that he didn't go 7-0, 7-0, 15-0, you know what I mean? And just immediately go back up. Because I wouldn't have thought that those younger guys could really contend with that. But uh, just to play devil's advocate, because I, I totally agree with every point you just made. But just to give another potential story for what might happen. I could see that if Machu- Makuchi is in this pattern, like we talked about where they're treading water and a lot of these kind of like wrestlers are kind of sticking around and going seven and eight, eight and seven against each other. It might be that his dominant Tachi eye speed was not as useful in the lower divisions against younger wrestlers who by merit of their youth also have that quickness or the ability to recover against it. And when he gets up here against some of these older wrestlers, who are relying more on technique and savvy, and there might be nothing to it. Like, a guy like Aoyama, Asanoyama could potentially get inside, grab that right-hand grip so quick that I could see him doing this sort of twist down on him just immediately. You know what I mean? Before Aoyama's even able to get out of his tachi eye. Stuff like that. And guys who traditionally rely on their quickness, someone like Kotoeko or even Midori Fuji, if they go up against him, I could see them where they're used to fighting against large men like Asanoyama who do not have that speed, where their speed is their advantage, and all of a sudden it's nullified, not because Asanoyama is faster than them, but because he's just as fast as them, so they do not get the favorable setups they thought they were going to get. Yeah, no, I mean, at this level, like, that could be terrifying for some of these guys, for him to have, like, that unique, he's going to hit you with the speed, plus he's insanely skilled and insanely strong. Like, yep. he's kind of got everything he needs. I know! He's the... I Again... I I need to calm down, but he was supposed to be the next Yokozuna, and they have robbed us of this. Yeah, I think he had to spend so long out of it that it's going to be a struggle, even for somebody as uniquely talented as him, to Mm. get back up to Yokozuna. I mean, he lost so much time. Yeah, yep. I don't think he will recover from that time, that lost time. I will be rooting for it every step of the way, but I just, I don't see it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm in the same boat. Like, I would love to see it. I hope I'm wrong, but Mm -hmm. it's going to be such a struggle. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, but well, it'll be good. Well, uh, it's going to be exciting. So that is all fine. But now a little bit else. It's a little different this time than the wide open fields that we've been watching because we're going to do a quick injury roundup here, but we cannot do an injury roundup without starting at the very top. The big boy, the terror of Mount Fuji is returning. I, he's like the savior of the people, and I think he's going to be back, and I think, oh my god, they need to look out, like, we've mentioned a couple times, he was so dominant, and really did, scored very well, badly injured, Mm -hmm. him having been out this long, Mm -hmm. I, good luck. (laughs) He's going to, he could potentially, even if it's a short run, could be what stops Asanyama actually from getting up top again. Yeah, I, I think and hope you're right, like, there was this stretch um, of basically it was 2021 starting in the summer of 2021 just of absolute madness for three straight basso bashos he had three losses total over him he had a zen show you show in there he had the one where it would have been a zen show you show but he had the epic amazing final fight with haku ho to end his career the, like i i want it back i want the best of the best terra no fuji i've been hearing from a lot of the nhk commentators that they don't think so that they think he's going to come back from this injury totally changed but i'm with you 
I'm hoping we have a stellar dominant performance here for a half a year and then he rides off into the sunset if that's what it must be. Yep. I would love to see that where, yeah, I looked at his scores and May and July where he was clearly still injured, still yep. fighting his knees, 12 and 3, 11 4. And a championship in there. Hurt. Yeah. yeah. Injured. Yep. <laughs> so I, he. I, I, I don't know until we actually see him coming back, but the the narrative of before is still not gone that he's the best. No one's even close to him as long as he comes back, like, healthy enough. Yep. And, I mean, some people might have more access to inside sources, you know, anybody in Japan that we definitely <laughs> don't have. But yes. But I, I think he'll come back well, um, which makes me super nervous for Taka Keisho. Yeah, let's talk about he it. He had... He had that injury. He's Kadoban right now. And there's a lot of people gunning for him, like with Wakamata Haru, mm -hmm. Daisho, Kiribayama, Terunofuji, Asunayama. Like, that's a tough field to come back to and not have that buffer. We talked about it. The the Sanyaku is looking very steely hard uh, in this tournament. And it's been very squishy uh, for the last, like, year and a half. So that could be a problem simply because he does not get the benefit of, again, we talked about Asunoyama. I personally think Asunoyama is going to be handed six free wins. I see no six free wins for Takake Show. No, I mean, it's just pure bad luck with him having gotten injured in the last time and then coming back to this. Yep. It's, it's bad luck, and I could definitely see him get a drop, which would be awful because he truly was last year mm -hmm. the only Ozeki that was actually performing at the level that you'd expect. Yeah, I know. I know. We love him. He's amazing. I think, I think also... It's, I think he'll hold Ozeki. I don't think that'll be a problem because I think he'll get eight wins. But what I think is interesting about it is how he is a true Ozeki, exactly like you're saying, because of how big of a failure eight wins feels like for him. When for other wrestlers, again, just to pick a random pusher thruster, this is not a guy who fights his same style per se, but like Iji Yamamoto, how great of a success 8-7 and seven feels for him, and what a disaster 8-7 and seven feels like for Takakesho. You know, like, I, I think it's more like it proves the point of how good he is, like, that an Ozeki should never, ever, ever get less, less than 10 wins, and I think everyone totally believes that with Takakesho, you know? Yeah, and that could be the flip side of it, is he knows he's coming back to something hard, and He's such a hyper aggressive, mm -hmm. crazy fighter that I think maybe it'll make him more competitive, knowing that he's gonna what he's gonna be facing and his refusal to drop down to that level, or he doesn't want to bring you know shame to that rank. Yep, especially yep. when he's the only one holding it. Exactly until until we maybe get one or two of these Sekiwakes up there, and and I think it's also important to notice that it came out they kept it really tight and under wraps, obviously for competitive reasons, but. Uh, January, he won that U show, and then it came out that he was injured in like week seven or something like that and fought the entire mm -hmm. second half of that tournament hurt. So I hope to see a big bounce back from him, but I, I'm with you. It is a it is a storyline to pay attention to out of concern. But there is one more piece of injury news now that we've already covered the Ichinojo injury, and that is Wakataka Kage, who we knew that didn't look good, and we suspected the flip flop was coming. And basically, we found out after last Basho that it is kind of even worse than we thought. Do you want to give us a rundown on sort of the news angle of Wakataka Kage's injury? Yeah, and I don't know if it's partially because of the recovery and everything that Terunofuji has had. But after his, I think it was an ACL tear, mm -hmm. so, he said he's going to have the surgery and yeah. he's he's staying out until he's recovered is what he and his coach have said, which is great. I'm glad that he's doing that. But he also doesn't have the obviously the advantage of Yokozuna of like you're just gonna come back at your rank. He could bounce down significantly. It's it's gonna be brutal. Yeah. So let's let's say uh, yeah, because I think he tore both his ACL and MCL, and he's gonna have the ACL surgically repaired, right? So that that's where it's gonna take longer. And yep. the reports I've seen is that that could take up to a year. So I holy smokes, man! If he misses all six basho over the next year is he coming back in joni don like whoa i think there's a good chance like, like where did it's gonna be some it's gonna be crazy to see him fighting at that low level i'm sure he'll clean up but it's yeah. still because interesting yeah one two three four six, six. so uh asano yama missed six so uh, asano yama went from ozeki in May of 2021, and he was Kadoban Ozeki, but did not lose his rank immediately. So it'll be a little bit worse than this. Okay, yeah. Um, Asunoyama came back 
at Sandan May 22. Um, and if we assume so Wakata Kakage, because he's not going to have that one buffer tournament where he uh, got to hold Ozeki, like Asanoyama, his first tournament back, quote unquote, was still at Ozeki. Whereas this is just, I, I think he's coming back in Joni Don, like maybe the teens, Joni Don in the teens, which adds mentally, that's so brutal, man. That's such a long road to get back to even close to where he's at right now, which it's got to be interesting with the Walker brothers, like how slightly good that must have felt to, for Wakamotoharu to swap with his brother. Just, you know, with a little bit of sibling rivalry there. And I think they are a little bit, you know, they kind of butt heads. But then with the edge of, you know, your brother's just straight up out for a very long time and he may not come back. <laughs> and... I worry about that. what that means for Wakamoto Haru because I think those two benefit enormously. I think Wakamoto Haru's rise has partly been due to the fact that he trains against Wakataka Kage every single day. And now he's lost his training partner. Yes, there are still some good wrestlers in Arashi Obeya, but I, let's, let me pull this up because I think they were the only two who stayed in Makuuchi ever since Kotokuzan dropped down. And Kotokuzan didn't even stay in Juryo now. He continued struggling and is down in Makushita. That Beya now, it's only Wakamoto Haru in the top division. So, yes, he can do cross uh, cross Heia training. Um, they can schedule to meet, especially now with the COVID restrictions in Japan uh, getting lower. But uh, it's, it's not the same as getting to fight against another top wrestler in the Sanyaku day in and day out in your own Beya. And... The opportunity to share strategies. I mean, I guess, I guess Wakataka Kage can still analyze tape with Mako, Wakamoto Haru. Um, they are a big uh, that those the Waka brothers have been really big in doing this uh, tape analysis and sort of trying to revolutionize what is sometimes a very old fashioned sport in sumo. And they all watch a lot of video of their opponents and themselves and use that. So maybe, maybe even from a coaching angle, Wakataka Kage can still help. But from a training aspect, that hurts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a critical loss to your training, but like you said, at least he should, for the most part, be able to be there to you know instruct from the side. But you don't get the same benefit. Mm -hmm. I know it's 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 tough. I think though it's it's gonna be a great basho, even with some of these things that are disappointments that we're losing some guys that we like to watch. We're seeing some new talent come in, and some of the uh, fresh faces that have arrived are getting this jetpack treatment, which we like. I actually think if anyone gets any time, and uh, if you uh, you have to subscribe to some of these weird, archaic uh, streaming sites to see some of the lower divisions and stuff, but Juryo should be exciting once again. Our boy Tochinoshin down there battling, but also uh, Oshomo, Roga, Enho, Gonoyama, Shona, Naomi, all those guys should have chances to bounce up here and should be exciting if they can manage to get in. Uh, Ochi is at M8, really slowed down after a stellar start, but maybe this is going to be good, like you said, the Kotonowaka treatment. But also, to truly just be an absolutely obnoxious slumdog hipster here, I'm really excited for Makushita this time around. Up at the top, Muscle Man Kawazoe and Shiden, who barely missed out losing to Ryo, who's at M3. Ryo is my boy because he's from Octaken, uh, which I have a personal affinity for in Japan. There's going to be some excitement down there. Oh, and uh, even uh, my, my man Mukai Nakano, who uh, his name is incredibly fun to say. And so that probably is why I like him as much as I do. It's probably not something that I needed uh, to focus on. But he's another Miyagino stable boy. So one of these Hakuho guys, protégés, who are starting to rise up, like Hokuseho, who I really have my eye on. Uh, Hokuseho and Ochiai are both Hakuho boys, and now Kawazoe and Mukai Nakano are also coming up on that front. So I think it's going to be super excited all around. Nick, uh, we'll do a more uh, dramatic uh, preview show right before the Basho starts, but is there anything you wanted to say about this coming tournament or your thoughts on who's taking this bad boy down? Uh, honestly, I truly, if Terunofuji's back, I do, I'd put probably pretty good odds on him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know it's easy to like focus like, oh, this person's injured or these people haven't been performing super well. But I truly think on the positive side, this is going to be 
an absolutely amazing tournament. I think this could be even better than March. I think so too. I think there are some amazing storylines. Two guys chasing Ozeki in this tournament. The return of the Yokozuna. A Katoban Ozeki who just had his Yokozuna dreams shattered. And that's just like the top four guys. There are so many storylines all throughout this. Like we talked about. Storylines all over in this tournament. Super exciting. Alright, so with that, thanks for listening everybody. And we'll talk to you again soon.